I guess we'll start a little early today. Um, I wanted to welcome you 
Grace and peace be with you all on this wonderful day that the Lord has made. No matter where you have been and no matter where you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here with an open heart, an open mind, and an open door. And in that sentiment, I just want you to turn to your neighbor, no need to stand or, ooh, no need to stand or, or shake hands or anything like that, but just turn to your neighbor and greet each other in love. And on the count of three, we'll say good morning to those who are joining us online. One, two, three. Good morning. And we just need to think about that, that those folks who are actually waving at us. I know some folks are waving at us at home, uh, saying good morning to us. And I'm just grateful that we can be here in this space, whether it's physically or online, um, that we can share in this time where we encounter and respond to God in community. I'm especially excited to see the the Hibners here this morning. Uh, Welcome to the Hibners. They're they're joining us back. I'm going to offer that as a joy a little bit later today. And I'm setting the precedent because I didn't write it down. So if I forget, I'll let Catherine Catherine know that I forgot to say that was a joy. (laughs) It's just great to be here with all of you. Um, As we begin our time in worship, I do want to uh, share a few ways our ministry is moving or just a few announcements. And how I'm going to do that is just by going through our mark your calendar section in your bulletin. Um, It's a pretty, there's not too many things happening in our mark your calendar section this week, but I will be adding one thing, but I'll get to that when I get to that point. Um, And actually, I'll say it now, because on Wednesday, um, we're going to have our third outing. I apologize, this past week we had uh, an email come out late about our second outing. Our first was at uh, Carlito's Cafe, uh, the coffee shop, right, that used to be right where Stepping Stones used to be, well, is where Stepping Stones used to be uh, for our Lenten outings. That was our first one. And yesterday we went and saw Jesus Revolution, which I'd have to say it's a pretty good movie if you have a chance to go see it. Did you see it, Mary? No, I haven't, but I saw the advertisements. They saw the advertisements? Yeah, I cheered up a little bit. I, I got emotional. It was a really, it was a really sweet movie, um, and I and I enjoyed that. It didn't try to sugarcoat anything for uh, for vanity purposes and things like that. But it was just a, it was a very um, heartfelt movie, in my opinion. If you have a chance to, to go see it, go ahead and see it. I, I encourage you to. It was great, and I thank you for uh, for those of you who were able to join me at the last minute because I sent out an email the day before. Uh, so I appreciate those of you who were able to join me. Um, this week's outing is going to be on Wednesday at 11, and we're going to go to Fane Lake. Uh, this may change, but I did want to have uh, us go to take a visit to Fane Lake early on because we're going to end our Lenten season, our Easter, on Easter with uh, a visit to Fane Lake for our sunrise service. So for now, Wednesday at 11, we're going to meet at Fane Lake. If not, we're going to meet at another coffee shop or a place that actually was suggested by Myla. Could you remind me of the name? Rafters 11. So if, yeah, so, so if, the, if the weather is bad, we'll meet at Rafters 11. But for now, we're planning on meeting at Fane Lake on Wednesday at 11. I'll have us sent out, send out an email on Tuesday to let you all know if that's still happening. So keep, keep an eye out. And if you do not receive email, um, we'll make sure that you receive that news as well so you can be aware of what's happening with our Lenten outings. The next thing, we have Caring Stitchers on Thursday at 10.30, and our cleaning crew at 8 a.m. on Thursday. Um, And then Saturday, we have the Bishop's Installation Service on Zoom, which I'm gonna be hosting here. Not in this physical building, we'll probably be in one of the rooms or uh, one of the rooms in this building or over in Fellowship Hall. I'll have an email sent out or information sent out about where that is. If you could let me know, whether or not you're planning on attending the service, I'd appreciate it. The bishop would appreciate it. I know that Bishop Carlo uh, wants to know who was able to attend and celebrate with all of those who were able to be a part.
part of his installation. Um, I was able to speak with him this past week, meet him um, at our clergy gathering, and he's just such a wonderful man, and I'm so excited for this installation service. So if you have not reached out to me already, uh, please do reach out to me if you're planning on attending. So when I register, which should be no later than tomorrow, I can also put your names on the registration so he's aware of your presence. And then on Sunday, we have our adult Sunday school with uh, Pastor Gary Simons at 9 and our Sunday uh, choir practice at 9.15. And now I'm going to just move right on and invite uh, Catherine Harrelson, our wonderful liturgist, to make an announcement today. Good morning. I just wanted to let or remind everybody about our bake sale on April 15th. Uh, we still would like to get as many people signing up um, as possible to bring some baked goods. Um, if not, then possibly you could volunteer on the 14th to help us box things up. And I think that's from 10 to 1 on Saturday, the fort, uh, Friday the 14th. And the bake sale is from 10 to 1 on the 15th. All right, I got it. Yeah, thank you. I love when we can hold each other accountable, check in with one another to make sure we have the right information. <laughs> I'm always worried I don't have the right information, uh, but that's only because of the notes I write down always aren't so great. I do want to um, share a couple of other things. Um, the first thing is we do not have coffee fellowship today, unfortunately, uh, but I was planning on celebrating this as a joy and letting you know anyway, but Catherine back here and uh, Stephanie uh, Smith are going to be hosting our coffee fellowship next week, and uh, I heard that Catherine is going to be baking some things. Yeah, and let me tell you, she's a good baker. I've had some of her, her, her baked goods, so uh, look forward to next week's coffee fellowship. We unfortunately will not have our coffee fellowship today. Um, and then the last announcement that I wanted to make is that on March 17th at 9 to 11, right? Okay, I had to double check with Elton because he just reminded me of making this announcement. Uh, March 17th from 9 to 11, the United Methodist Men are hosting uh, a St. Patty's Day pancake breakfast. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I love pancakes. Last year, I was too busy chatting with someone else and I missed it all. And you're wondering, how could I chat for a couple of hours? Well, I can. Um, so I missed that couple of hours, unfortunately, but I'm excited to have our St. Patty's Day uh, United Methodist Men Pancake Breakfast, March 17th, 9 to 11. Um, come on over. There will be a free will offering um, that we'll be taking during that time, um, and we'll just be enjoying some wonderful, possibly green pancakes. I heard. Maybe. No? no. Are we having? Optional. Optional. <laughs> It would only be food coloring, right? No, nothing, nothing, nothing um, molded or anything. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, it was a joke that we had talked about earlier. Like maybe we could have green eggs and ham. And I was just kidding. Um, green things because it's St. Patty's Day. But no, it's optional. Uh, we probably won't even have green pancakes. It was just my my uh, my love for the color green that made me say that. <laughs> but in, uh, March 17th, which is a fr Friday. Right? Yes. Okay. I needed that account that hold, hold myself accountable. Friday. Uh, but are there any other announcements for the, the good of our church family this morning? Well, okie dokie then. Let us uh, ring in our time together. I would now like to invite you to rise as you are comfortable to join in our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory. <clears throat>
Thanks for remaining standing <laughs> for the call to worship. As we look up to the mountains, let us remember that our strength comes from God. God is with us when we stumble, shielding us, sheltering us. As we look up to the mountains, let us remember that we can celebrate our God who calls us to higher ground. And now the opening prayer. Guardian God, in our worship, our guide, our reflections, cradle us in your love and nurture us tenderly to be unafraid of welcoming you anew. In all the spaces we gather, share with us your sweet message so that we may join you in scattering it like seed throughout the earth. We pray in your loving name, amen. And now, our message in music, I will lift up mine eyes by the PBUMC choir. I'm sorry, but we've changed our mind. Okay, that's your prerogative. It's not the, it's not the problem of the church uh, office, but we're going to sing instead, Fill My Cup, Lord. And uh, next Sunday when you're here, we will sing, I will lift up mine eyes and your eyes. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Sarah. <clears throat> what a wonderful way always for us to start off with such a gift as we recognize the giving of our gifts before God this morning. During this time, we recognize ourselves as stewards. This word gets thrown ar around all the time, stewards, stewardship, especially within church settings, but it really highlights what it means to be able to have recognize the gifts we've received from God, manage those gifts, and share those gifts in return, knowing that those gifts are as present in our treasures as they are in our talents, our time, and our witness, our testimony. <laughs> so during this time, I always invite us to think about what that means, or at least I have for the past year or so, to think about what it means to be God's stewards. Today, I am blown away just even by presence and how that can be a gift. And I was thinking about this just a second ago, looking out at all of your faces, looking at the choir and seeing all of us here and seeing that as a gift. So before I invite the ushers to come forward and guide us in our reflections for giving of our gifts before God or our stewardship moment, I would love for you just to turn to your neighbors and say, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. 
And because uh, it wouldn't be uh, a multi space, I guess I don't know how to phrase this, but it wouldn't be us also having online worship if we didn't say thank you to those who are joining us online as well. So I'm going to go back to the count of three and just say thank you for being here at the same time, okay? One, two, three. Thank you for being here. I am truly grateful for this gift of presence as much as we recognize our treasures, our talents, and our time, and our testimony in this space, remembering that us being here together, coming together in all the ways we come together, whether it's in person or online, is a gift. I'd like us to reflect upon that today during this time, and I'm going to invite the ushers to guide us through this time with the passing of the plate. I now invite you to rise as you are comfortable as we join in one voice praising God with the singing of our doxology. Would you join me in an attitude of prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for this time, for this time to recognize the gifts you have offered to us as we offer our gifts in return. We know that you are here with us, inviting us into the same generous spirit you bear for us all. And so as we offer these gifts before you, knowing that it isn't just our treasures, but our time, our talents, our testimony, our presence that we offer, that all of our gifts may be used for your glory. We pray this in your name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Before I begin, are there any other joys or concerns that I don't have? Okay. All right, I will start with this one. Uh, prayer request and a joy. Um, thank you for your prayers, emails, and cards. I'm on the mend. I'm seeing an orthopedic doctor for the hip bursitis and scheduled for some therapy, physical therapy soon. And this is from Janet W. Lord, in your mercy, 
Here are our prayers. Okay, from, this is a prayer for Sarah B. She's healing after hip surgery. Well, this seems to be going around, doesn't it? Uh, this request is from Mila. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, prayer request for Richard L. He fell Saturday. Pray for healing due to continued pain. And this is uh, from Jackie L. via Mila. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, prayer request for Bob C., neighbor of Michael and Linda. Emergency room visit for chest pains sent home with oxygen and prescriptions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayer for Tiffany P., Texas friend of Michael and Linda. She has a respiratory illness and lingering cough. Uh, the request was from Michael. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, last one, Jeannie and Gary W. Gary is not feeling well, so please keep him in your prayers. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Okay. Um, As we join together in prayer today, there are two things I want to mention before we start. The first is that I'm gonna start off with a brief moment of silence for not only the prayers we've offered in this space, but for prayers that lay heavy on hearts all around the world. Ones we don't see, ones we don't hear, as well as the ones we see and the ones that we hear. And the second thing I wanna mention is that today, I was very moved by a prayer uh, written by uh, Brumhart Publishing, so I'm going to be offering an adapted version of that today. I want to be aware, this is these aren't my words, but they're beautiful words prepared by Brumhart Publishing. And so I begin with a moment of silence. Would you join me? We come together in prayer. God of Abram and Nicodemus, God of all of us who think we are too old, too poor, or too small, or too weak, or too busy. God of all of us daunted by the sheer wonder of the plan you lay out before us. We come to you now aware of all you have done for us, and yet str still struggling with our doubts. Birth us all anew, O oh God. Hear us and help us on our journey. God of all creation, we pray for this world where so many wander homeless, not by choice, but out of necessity, where so many are looking for milk and honey or a great name to rescue them. We pray for all the people in this world. We pray for all people who lay down their lives, for the safety of our families and neighbors. We pray for those who lead us. Birth us all anew, O oh God. Hear us and help us on our journey. God of the sunsets and the sunrises, we pray for all those who long for a new beginning, those who are imprisoned, those who are estranged, those who have left loved ones behind and those who are ill or infirm, 
Give them all new life by the power of your spirit. Help us to see how we can be present with them as your hands and feet. Birth us all anew, O God. Hear us and help us on our journey. God of all who are seeking, we pray for your holy church. Give us the courage to leave everything behind and follow you. Give us the faith to act on what we do not understand. Bless us to be a blessing to everyone in your name. Birth us all anew, O God. Hear us and help us on our journey. Birth us all anew, O God. Hear us and help us on our journey. Help us to grow again, to accept not only earthly things, but heavenly things, to lift up your Son and be lifted up ourselves, to let your Spirit move us beyond our understanding. God of the silence and the loud booms of life, hear us and help us, even, at, even as surely as the Spirit blows among us, all for the sake of your dear Son, who taught us to pray, when we pray to say, as I now invite us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen, amen, amen. Today's scripture is John 3, verses 1 through 17. Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows whenever it pleases, wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone being born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave 
his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. You can remain seated, and now we'll have our hymn, Freely, Freely. Before I invite us into prayer, I actually wanted to uh, begin with a joke this morning. It came up as I was reflecting on our scripture, uh, and it's a Lenten joke that my grandmother told me recently, and by recently I mean within the past year. Uh, how many of you are aware of Catholic Lenten traditions? Okay, a couple of you. Well, some, one of the traditions is not to eat meat on Fridays. And this is where this joke comes in. So I wanted just to, to set that as a pre precedent. My grandma was so giddy when she told me this joke because she's like, you'll understand it. Uh, and it was so exciting. She said that there was a, a Protestant, uh, so someone who is uh, Methodist, Baptist, someone who is not Catholic, okay? Someone, there was a Protestant who moved into a Catholic neighborhood. On one particular Friday during Lent, this Protestant decided to barbecue some steaks. The aroma of the steaks was too much for the Catholic neighbors, so one of them decided to get him to stop grilling steaks by converting him to Catholicism. The Protestant agreed. You know, we share the same faith, uh, just a different practice. Uh, the Protestant agreed and went to the church with the Catholic to be converted. The priest sprinkled holy water on the Protestant and proclaimed, you were born a Protestant, you were raised a Protestant, but now you are a Catholic. <laughs> the priest also explained that Catholics weren't allowed to eat meat on Fridays during Lent. And the Catholic neighborhood was just so excited. They didn't have to have that temptation on Friday anymore, right? Not to have to smell the wonderful aroma of a steak being grilled until the next Friday after he was uh, baptized, the ex-Protestant was grilling steaks and making the neighbors drool again. The neighbors looked over the fence all angry and saw the ex-Protestant pouring ketchup on a steak proclaiming, you were born a cow, you were raised a cow, but now you are a fish. 
I thought that was such a cute joke that my grandmother told me. Uh, and, and it was just very sweet. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to share that with you today, especially as we talk about this concept, born again. But before uh, I get into a more <laughs> deep reflection, would you pray with me? <laughs> Glorious God, we thank you for the laughter. We thank you for the opportunity to reflect upon your word, to share in community, to be a part of this space. And as we join together during this time of reflection, I pray, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 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 Now, I'm going to get more serious. I wanted to start off with some laughter because this is a, a little serious today. Uh, there are a few questions we will be asking ourselves throughout our time of Lent, and they are, who is Jesus in the passages we are reading? What is Jesus offering in the passages we are reading? And what can we learn from him as we make our journey closer to the cross, to Easter. This goes along with our efforts to paint a picture of Jesus and how that picture influences the lives of all who seek to understand him. Last week, we began in the wilderness with Jesus. As he prepared for his ministry, he demonstrated trust amidst temptation. When temptation often becomes the focus, he set it aside and said, I don't need the more that is being offered. I already know who my God is, and I am well with my soul. With this, I invited us to look at how it is with our souls and what we need from this time of Lent as opposed to solely focusing on what we can give up, which is a big practice in Lent, a very important one but I invited us to focus on how is it with our souls and what do we need in this time of Lent. Today we read a passage that is both important and also a little amusing, at least in my opinion. I, I always find myself giggling a little bit when I read this passage. We read uh, or hear about an interaction Jesus has with a Jewish leader named Nicodemus. After sneaking out in the middle of the night to share his belief in Christ, to Christ, Nicodemus was left scratching his head. Uh, but we can assume he was changed by the encounter, even though he was a little confused. We see that in our scripture today. You see, Nicodemus was going to meet Jesus, and this was a big deal, which is also why many see his trip at night to be significant. He couldn't let anyone see him, you know, <laughs> It was also a sign of Nicodemus walking into the dark to greet the light. These are just some traditions we see or some interpretations we see about this scripture. With this, regardless of the possible danger and or upset, Nicodemus greets Jesus and tells him that he and others believe he is directly from God. Nicodemus says, there is no way, no way you can do what you do and not be from God. To this, Jesus replies, you're absolutely right. Take it from me. Unless a person is born from above, it is not possible to see what I'm pouring into, pointing to, to God's kingdom. This is where the story gets a little amusing because Nicodemus cannot wrap his head around what Jesus is saying about being born from above. His thoughts are, there's no way someone can be born again, especially after they have lived a good portion of their life already. Even talking about how you cannot go back into your mother's womb. <laughs> I always giggle a little bit when I read this, but it's true when you look at it, you cannot think about being born again unless we've already reflected upon it again and again. And Nicodemus just thought it's not going to happen. To this, Jesus responds, this is God's love, an opportunity for life. 
an opportunity for new life, eternal life, that can start now and be projected into what could be. This is God's love, an opportunity for life, an opportunity for new life, eternal life, that can start now and be projected into what could be. Many say this is the heart of the gospel. New life as God's children through faith in Jesus' person and mission. This is to recognize that God's love gives and offers purpose, renews and gives life. And if we are looking at who Jesus is in this passage, he is the one with the invitation. Who is Jesus in this story if not someone who is inviting Nicodemus to see that there is an opportunity to begin again? I like this phrasing of begin again better than born again this morning. Not because I'm trying to be blasphemous and change our scripture, but I like the way it highlights the power of the goodbyes and the hellos of this life, the farewells and the greetings. I gravitated to this phrasing, begin again, because of a commenter, Reverend Bruce Reyes Chow, who shared his journey as he encountered our scripture this morning. He shared moments in his life. He shared how he had to let go of a loved one, as well as his livelihood to take care of himself. He said, I choose me today so that I, so that we may all have a better tomorrow. He said he made a choice to start over again and see that there is a gift that, see that is a gift and not a failure. He made a choice to start over again and see it as a gift and not a failure. That this was God expanding the vision before him, the life before him. This hit me because often switching one's course can feel like a failure. Like having to make a choice that changes your life because of health or circumstance and only thinking it's too soon. Like saying goodbye when all you want to do is say hello. And this made me think, maybe our reading of Christ's invitation to be born again can be as simple as asking the question, how do we begin again? How do we begin again? I read this passage and I don't think Christ is looking for extravagance when he says we can only enter the kingdom if we are born again. It is more like a caterpillar in a cocoon, waiting to be unearthed, transformed into a butterfly. It is a part of life to change, but how we do it is also a decision we make. In faith, we see this as a journey to accept the opportunity to be transformed when we realize that Christ is offering life and it isn't something that is one and done. <laughs> it isn't as simple as saying you were born a cow, <laughs> you were raised a cow, but today you're a fish, right? It's a process of renewal before our very eyes and this can happen at any time. And this is very vital for us today, not only personally, but communally talked about this quite a little bit. There's, there's a lot of opportunity for us to begin again within our church. Thinking about how God is expanding what lies before us. How do we begin again? We can ask this question and just let it be, but I want us to think about it. And I was going to ask questions, but I know it's a very serious question, very serious question, and the questions that I had for today would only 
become a little bit more complicated and, and make our time together longer, but I want you to think about it as I have when I was reflecting upon this scripture. How do we begin again? Is it something personal, like making a choice, making a step, a decision, a move? Is it as extravagant as figuring out what it means to be active in faith? How do we begin again? Is it about our global church, United Methodist Church, and finger, th thinking about how we can move forward as a local church, a part of the United Methodist Church? How do we begin again? Is it entering the community and learning more, engaging more, helping more, being a part of the community in ways we never thought possible? How do we begin again? How do we begin again? It could be just that simple. How do we begin again? May this be a thought for us as much as we think about how it is with our soul and what we need for Lent. May we think about how we can begin again as Christ's invitation for us. Would you pray with me? Glorious God, we are grateful that you meet us here where we are, present, inviting. We thank you that you welcome us into something more, guide us to higher ground and invite us to see that beginning again is not a one and done situation, but a process of renewal. We pray that during this time of Lent, you can renew us, that we can see you renewing us, teaching us how we can begin again. Help us do so, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'd now like to uh, invite you to remain seated and join in our hymn, This is the Day of New Beginnings, continuing our reflection on new beginnings just before we join together in our great Thanksgiving communion. Let us join together now.
This is a day of new beginnings. I like to think every day is a day of new beginnings with the new sunrise, you know? And even when the sun's not out, it's still there. (laughs) We are now going to be joining together in our time of communion. The Lord's Supper, the Great Thanksgiving, the Last Supper. We have a lot of names for calling uh, for this time we shared together, even Eucharist which is a fancier term that I uh, don't use very often. (laughs) But it's a beautiful way of describing this time we have together. I'm grateful that we can come together for communion, recognizing God's love that is poured out in this time. Communion is a sacrament, which is an outward sign of an inner working grace. It is a way we regard God's love in a profound way, becoming physically present before us, In this time, we not only nourish our bodies with something physical, ordinary, but we nourish our souls with something extraordinary in this time. And so those of you who are joining us at home, I invite you to prepare with us for this time. I'm trying to tilt this down. But I also want to invite us to center our hearts for what this means for us. Communion is not something that is meant to be exclusive. It's open for us all. We do share an open table here in the United Methodist Church, here at Prescott Valley UMC. All we do ask as we join together around this table is that you come with love in your hearts. Love for God, love for Jesus, love for community, that you can come ready to receive. I'm going to go over a few logistics before I invite us to join in our liturgy, which will be on the screen. We are going to be having one station, right that right here, and it's going to be myself, and it's going to be Catherine, okay? I'm going to be breaking the bread. I'm going to be wearing gloves and my mask, and I'm wearing my mask because I did go to the gathering this past week um, with a bunch of other clergy, so that's just me just trying to be aware of the group I was a part of. I'm gonna be wearing my mask and gloves, and I'm gonna be breaking the bread and offering it to you. But Catherine will be the one dipping the bread, okay? So I'm gonna offer the bread to you, and then I'm gonna pass it to Catherine, and she's gonna offer the cup, okay? And she's gonna dip it for you and hand it to you. And that will be when we open the table for everyone. The table is open, (laughs) but prior, prior to inviting everyone forward, I will be inviting those who are helpers in the service today to partake first. So it'll be Catherine, our liturgist, the AV team, our ushers, and our greeters, who I'll be inviting forward to partake first. This is just so we're not having to stop anything, um, but also recognizing their service here in this space. And I will invite you to join in a semicircle when you come forward, those of you who are helping, okay? After that, the ushers will invite everyone to come forward and the table will be open for everyone. I did add an extra slide today so that way those who are helping can know it's their time to come forward. Are we all on the same page? Went over all the logistics? Then let us share the love. Let us share the love. Uh, I'm gonna invite you to join me in response in this wonderful liturgy. Uh, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the water, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah 
fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still, small voice. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on the cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days and exalted him at your right hand by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the slavery of sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when your Easter people, when your people prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance, the cleansing of our hearts, that for these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to affirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. And we pray you help us do so as we regard the night Christ offered himself up for us. Because it was on that night when he gave himself up for us that he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, almighty God, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered for this time, on our gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. And now I'm going to invite those who are helping to partake first, but the table is open for us all.
I now um, would like to invite you to rise as you're comfortable for our closing blessing and our song of farewell and mission. I always love to end the service with communion. It makes my heart feel so filled with love. Uh, to be able to see all of you, to offer this sacrament, to share in God's grace with all of you. And that's a sentiment I would like us to leave with today. That we may embrace God's grace that became evident in Christ, through Christ's sacrifice, through Christ's invitation to begin again, to who Christ came to be and will continue to be in our lives, even as we celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit. May we hold on to this, may we celebrate it, may we carry it into the world, God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us now join together in our song of farewell and mission.